Hi everybody, happy Friday. It's time for Facebook Friday. I hope that your week has gone well and I hope that you are ready for the weekend and I hope you have some craft time this weekend because I've got some really fun projects for you today. All right, I'm gonna adjust some of this as I see what it looks like. The way my phone holder is, it's hard for me to see where things are. Let's see, I want you to be able to see this. All right, that's good. Um, so, while we wait a few minutes for everybody to join, let me know that you're here so I can say hello. Ah, there, now I see you guys. Hi, Marianne, Courtney, Nancy, and Darcy, welcome. All right, so today, we're going to do three projects featuring the new Treat Time Bundle. And the Treat Time Bundle was the thing that really jumped out at me the most, I think, when I, when I first saw the new catalog. So, how many of you have it on your wish list? Hi, Laurie. Hi, Pam. Crystal, Janet, Patty. Hello, everybody. Yeah, so it was on my first order, for sure. Let's see, I'm going to share this onto my page and then I'll be able to focus on what I'm saying. Share on my page. There we go. All right. Yeah, it's so cute. When I saw this bundle and saw that it made these sour cream containers, I knew that it was going to be a big hit. Now, sour cream containers are pretty easy to make on their own, but this has several little fun aspects to it, like making a rounded top, which is really cool. So we're going to do that. We're going to make one of those, a gift card holder and a box. It has something yummy inside, like always. All right, so, um, so Kathy says it's on her wish list. Has anybody already ordered it? I hope some of you have, because I'm going to give you some ideas. All right, before we get started, let me move these out of the way. Let me go over prizes. Um, so I was giving away two big prizes last week, one of which was the Lily Pad Lake. And I have it here, actually. It's already ready to go. And Lauren, I think that's how you say your name, or Lauren, you are the winner. And I have emailed you. So look, check your email. Let me know. I'm sending that to you. And the other one was the five ink pads. And now I'm drawing a blank. But I've already put it in the mail. Who was it? It's on last week's blog. And now I can't even remember who it was. It slipped my mind. I don't know. I'll have to look. But it's already in the mail. I already left it at the mail today. So those two prizes went out. Thank you, everybody who entered. And I had, I, I said I had two really good prizes. If you shared the video last week, two hostess sets, remember? Hand delivered is going to Jonelle Chabriz. I think that's how you say your name. Janelle, I have your address. So this will be going to you. And Courtney Mitchell. Did I see Courtney on here earlier? Courtney, this is going to you. I have your mailing address too. So congratulations, ladies. I really do appreciate um, when you share my video. It helps um, me reach a larger audience, which is always good for business. So this week, if you wouldn't mind sharing the video again, I would greatly appreciate it. And next week, I'm giving away two Simply Shammies. So you guys know I've talked about my simple Simply Shammy. Here it is. It's nice and grungy. I just cleaned it. Can't you tell? <laughs> so um, this is the new uh, stamp cleaning chamois. I've got two extra ones I'd like to give away next week um, during Facebook Live. So I'll go through and just randomly pick two people who've shared the video, this video on Facebook, and um, I'll announce that next week. Now the big prize... I always give away a big prize on my blog. So you have to go over to my blog to enter for the big prize. Um, that was the ink pads in the lily pad lake last week. If you scroll to the bottom of the post, there's a little widget there and you enter your email address and sometimes I ask you a question. Um, the more things that you answer, the more entries you get. Usually I ask you something like, um, what's your favorite stamp set or something like that. And I think this week, I think I'm only asking you two things. So that'll be two entries, and I'm giving away Follow Your Dreams, the Follow Your Dreams bundle. 
Uh, you might have seen this yesterday when I did my unboxing. This is, um, I have ordered several of them um, for prizes. One for me and one for prizes. So go over pinkbuckaroo.com. It should be up now, hopefully, and scroll to the bottom and enter to win. And that will be announced next week also. Now, if you're new to Facebook Live, I always offer my three make and takes for free with a $30 minimum order, and you have to use this hostess code. Um, if you order by Monday the 11th at midnight, I will send you these three make and takes that we're going to make. And just out of curiosity, I know some people wonder what that looks like. Here are last week's make and takes, and that way you can use your products, your stamps and ink, and then I send you everything else. You can see embellishments are in there and I score and do die cutting that needs to be done. And uh, you can put them together. So if you ordered last week, just a heads up, I was late mailing those this week and they went out today. This has been a crazy week with the end of school. I took the entire day of Wednesday off. I just was very behind. So they went out today. Um, so it may take a little bit longer than normal. Usually I try to get those, I cut them Tuesday morning and sometimes I can even get them in the mail Tuesday afternoon. Um, but usually they go out no later than Wednesday. So I apologize to those of you who ordered last week. They're a few days late, but they are on their way. Okay, so don't forget Monday at midnight. You're gonna see lots of things that you want today, I know for sure. And um, this is a great way to uh, get a little bit of freebie added on to your order. Another way to get a freebie is to spend $50. And I always offer this to All Star Tutorial Bundle that me and 12 other designers have come together to make 13 tutorials. We have a guest designer. And um, so you can see it's their step-by-step -step using new things. I printed it out so you could see it. And there's a link on today's post too where you can see um, the full write-up. We did a blog hop on Saturday and you can kind of get the details. I always send this for free with $50 order. Um, if you're a demonstrator and you don't want to order but you just you want the tutorial, it's available in my PDF store for $15 also. Now my downline always get these for free. They get all my PDFs for free. So if your wish list is really big today and you've been giving the starter kit a thought, I think you really should consider it. It's the best deal. $99, no shipping, free shipping. Um, you get $125 of anything you want. So you could order what you see here today up to $125 and then you're going to get all my PDFs for free every month plus all the other benefits of being on my team, the Sweet Stampede. So think about that and if you're interested you can message or email me or click on the join tab at the top of my blog and that will give you some more information. All right, it looks like we've got lots of people here. I think we're ready to start stamping. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm seeing all of you saying hello um, and sharing. Thank you. I really do appreciate sharing. I, I have a hard time. I get in my little bubble and, and I'm talking and it's hard for me to read and then speak in complete sentences <laughs> at the same time. Okay, so like I said, we're using the Treat Time Bundle. That's this right here. And if you have your new catalog, it's on page 35. And you can see here the little, the three little containers. Very, very cute. Um, the stamp set's really good too. Um, just really good kind of anytime um, sentiments. And it has this, you know how I love a label um, or a banner or any kind of shape where I can put words on it. These fit around all of these. So that's what we're using today. Now if you, I want to point this out because I always forget about the bundle price. Um, if you're going to order, if you want the stamps and the framelits, make sure to use, look for these little boxes in the catalog because if you order it as a bundle, you actually save 10% than if you order them separately. So there it is right there. There's the, um, the little box with a bundle number on it. It's also on the PDF, which I didn't mention that. Let me pull that off my printer. I only printed one page, I'm not sure why. Over on my blog right now, under the last photo, you'll see a link and it'll have this PDF. It's actually two pages. It'll have this PDF that has all three projects. It has the all the products that you need, product item numbers and make it easy for you, as well as um, dimensions dimensions that you need um, to make this at home. And the second page also has announcements. It has my class, my uh, Sea of Textures class for June and a link about 
the starter kit and a few other things. So go over there to my blog. You can save it to your computer or you can print it. Um, and that way you will know how to make these projects. All right, so let's get started. I thought we'd start with this one first because it's like the traditional traditional way that this bundle is designed to, to, uh, to be made. Now, before, let me show you, I also made the two others so you could kind of get an idea of how this framelit works. Um, they have it, it's kind of like a puzzle. And uh, you, you're gonna start with this, and then you're gonna add on whichever topper you want. So the one that we're gonna do today has a heart, and then this one is rounded. See how that looks? So you could leave that like that, or you could even fold it over, which I think is pretty cute. And then just a straight one, and you can do the little um, scallop there across, which is what they've done in the catalog. Maybe they did it like that. Very cute. So you gotta decide which one you wanna do, and we're gonna use this one for right now. And it's like a little puzzle. You're just gonna fit these pieces together with this. And I have found that if I take this piece behind and snap it in, it's, it seems to do better that way than going up on the top. Um, one thing I wanna point out are these little lines right here. This is going to just kind of emboss a little line on your paper for you. And that is gonna show us where to pinch um, when we're closing it. Um, when I first played with this, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little confused. It took me a little bit and I talked to somebody, um, one of the designers at Stampin' Up! who confirmed with me exactly what those are for. There's uh, Stampin' Up! has yet to put out a video on this, so I was kind of, kind of making it up as I went. Okay, um, let's get started. I am also using another stamp set. I decided, and you'll probably see, I wanted to use this little flower right here, but I didn't want it to say get well soon. I just wanted it to be like a thank you. So we're gonna use that, and then I'm pulling in a sentiment from this wonderful thank you set, which is new, called a big thank you. If you do a lot of thank you gifts, this one's really good. All right, we're gonna use, this is Pineapple Punch, and Pineapple Punch is one of our new ink colors, and it is bright and cheery and happy, and I love it. And we're also, of course, using the, the blue that we're using is Blueberry Bushel. All right, so we're gonna get our big shot. Let me move it up so you can see it. This is a really neat die. You're right, Marion. This is a really um, different die than, than anything that we've really had before. Um, it's very unique, the fact that those pop in and out. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is that this is a six by six piece of DSP. That's how the stack comes. But you, if you're gonna use cardstock, you can cut your cardstock in half on the five and a half inch line, and you'll be able to get two, um, one on each side. So two containers from one full piece of cardstock. That's always important to me. You know, how much cardstock does one take? Because sometimes, if you're using eight and a half by 11 cardstock, something that six by six is gonna just use up a whole piece. All right, so, looks like that didn't cut very well. That's funny because I've done these, I've made about eight of these and I have not had that problem yet. You know what I always say when I turn that camera on, and if you turn the die, it probably should have gone through twice. You turn the die sideways like that, more pressure will be on those sides. So maybe next time we'll, we'll run it through twice. All right, so here's the main design and those little check lines are very hard to see. You want to kind of bend them so you know where they are. It's gonna help us decide where to put our adhesive. All right, okay, so can you kind of see how I've done that? Now you want to definitely use tear and tape on this. This is, um, when you roll paper, it kind of puts a lot of pressure on the paper and they want to pop open. So the tear and tape really prevents that. All right, so I'm going to put one roll, if I can find the end of it, one roll of adhesive, one roll of tear and tape right here on this end. And then, can you see, let me bend it a little bit. Here are those tick marks right there. I'm gonna put adhesive right there between those little tick marks. And then I'm gonna put adhesive 
right here below the top of the heart. All right, now let's peel this off. Oh, Laurie, I'm glad to hear see you say that. I felt kind of like maybe I was having a blonde moment when I was like, "Hey, okay, wait a minute. What is all what are all these tick marks? What are they?" And I played with it and then I I thought maybe I knew, but I didn't want to tell you guys something and it be wrong. So I contacted my friend who's in the design the um concept art department there and she just right away was like, "Oh, that's where you pinch it closed." And when she said it, I was like, "Well, Duh, yeah, <laughs> it made sense. All right, so we've made a tube. See how we've made a tube? And now down here, here, can you see those pinch lines? Where we where we uh, had it made those tick marks, we're gonna squeeze that. You put in your M&Ms or your Skittles or your Hershey Kisses or whatever, and then you squeeze it closed. And that's it. So easy, right? I mean, really, sour cream containers was probably one of the first things that I made. Um, when I started paper crafting and doing 3D. And uh, so it's just, it's always fun because it's easy. All right, so let's make the tag. We need blueberry bushel ink. And remember our new ink pads, you guys, don't try to push. You wanna open it all the way and then slide. Because if you try to slide before you get all the way, I think you might damage your ink pads. So just remember, it's just like a compact open and slide. And I will say, we talked about this in the beginning when I got them, they were pretty tight. Now that I've used them so much, they're not tight at all. They really do, They Stampin' Up told us, they'll loosen up a little bit as you use them, and they do, and now it slides beautifully. All right, so we're gonna stamp this first on Whisper White. And then I had a little scrap, here it is. A scrap of the um, blueberry bushel designer series paper and I want this to be the front so I'm gonna stamp on the back because we don't want those words this isn't a get well soon treat for me this is a hey thanks a lot kind of treat okay so now I'm gonna take this with my little tiny paper snips when you are cutting around something like this we call it fussy cutting you want to use the smallest scissors that you have and the sharpest, make sure they're small and sharp. And I'm just gonna kind of stay on the outside of that line. It doesn't really matter too much because I'm going to adhere it down, face down. But we want it to be the same shape as what we have stamped here. All right, so then we're just gonna put a little adhesive there, right like that. All right, and now take your one and a half inch circle and punch. Just, there's our tag. Now for the sentiment, like I told you, I'm using a big thank you and I'm using ever so grateful. I liked that a lot. And I'm doing blueberry bushel again. And we're gonna make a little flag using our classic label punch. I'm gonna take it over here Let's see that I want to start on this side. So I'm going to I'm going to center it to the right. And then I'm going to take it and stick it back in and try to center it exactly in between and punch again and there. Look a cute little flag. So cute. All right, this is a job for many dimensionals. And right there, and there's our tag. All right, let's close this before we have a, a disaster. Now I'm gonna take some of my blueberry bushel grow, grow grain ribbon, and I will say that because this container is empty and there's no way to hold it down, it is a little tricky to tie this on. So hopefully I don't make it look too difficult because once you have candy in here, it'll be pretty easy. And just tying that around. And we're gonna make it look like this tag is hanging from this. It's not going to be hanging. It's just gonna be on a dimensional. And not this time I'm gonna use my full dimensionals. And there you go. Ta-da, done. Ever so grateful. So these would be great 
teacher gifts, neighbor gifts, coworker gifts, party favors, table decorations. Um, think about 4th of July, how cute they would be in red, white, and blue. So fun. Okay, I'm seeing the hearts. Thanks, guys. I'm glad you like them. So funny. Even a blonde can figure it out. Yes, sometimes it takes us a minute, but this one was pretty easy. <laughs> All right. So, how many of you think you could make that? I think pretty much everybody could. I'm going to use my chamois to clean. How many of you have ordered the Simply Chamois yet? I know, I've ordered several. I want them in every part of my office. I don't want to have to go looking for them. And at $8, you can afford to do that. They're pretty affordable. All right, project one is done. Let me make room for project two. Thanks, guys. All right, project two is a long treat box. And I don't know if my friend Kay is on here, but she could probably guess what's in here. A little Debbie snack. I'm always about the little Debbies. I don't eat them, but they do make a cute gift and affordable too, $1.99. Walmart, six of them. Very affordable if you've got to give them out. So these are called, I've never heard of these. I don't know, but I knew that they would make a good size box. A devil cream? I don't know. Yum, yum. Um, when you buy, I wanted to tell you guys something. When you buy Little Debbie Snacks, we're trying to find things um, to make boxes for. I always look to make sure that they say individually wrapped. Because sometimes they come in there double wrapped. And then that's really big. So look, because it'll be deceiving. It'll say six cakes, but then they're double wrapped. So then you only really have three treats. So if you buy um, little Debbie snacks to put in these things, make sure you're looking for individually wrapped. Just a little tip. Okay, so this project, I need my little printout. We're going to need our measurements and our Simply Scored. I am using the new Granny Apple Green, and I keep wanting to call it Granny Apple Smith Green, which is not the name, it's Granny Apple Green. And it's um, a really good Kelly Green, I think, with the blueberry bushel. I love green and navy, you know, like a Kelly Green and a navy, so I really like those colors together. So that's, that was what I was thinking when I made this box. Okay, let's get started. This time, we're not using the actual um, sour cream dye. We're just using the little frame. Um, you're going to need a piece of granny apple green that is eight by six and a half. Now you guys, just so that you know, this PDF has all this right here. So go over and print it out. Don't scramble and write it on a post-it note because you'll lose it. Print this out. Also, I have pre-recorded these videos are all going to be uploaded on YouTube this weekend individually too. If you want to use them later so that you don't have to like go back and forth in an hour long Facebook Live, you can find them individually recorded on YouTube. Just a little FYI. Okay, so like I said, this is eight by six and a half. We're gonna score the long side at one and a fourth and six and three fourths. And then the short side at one and three fourths, three inches, four and three fourths, I'm looking at my notes, and six. All right, set that over there. The first thing that we're gonna do is cut off these skinny rectangles here on the end. We don't need them, so we're just gonna cut those right off. Okay, both of them. And they're skinny, you'll see they're very, they're much smaller than everything else, so you'll know which ones to cut. Now this tab, I want you to just cut off that corner. Okay, there we go. Now we're just gonna cut these score lines up to the horizontal score line. There we go. There's that one, that one, and that one. Okay, now burnish all those lines. Get them folded. If you have your bone folder, you could really run that across there and make it nice and crisp. Now we're gonna fold the skinny tab in and put your, your strong adhesive, use your tear and tape. If you don't have fast fuse anymore, remember fast fuse is gone, but I'm using mine up. Use tear and tape, it'll work just as good. And there you have your box. Can you see how it's already gone together? 
Now fold in the little ones first and decide which is the clean edge. See how that's the rough edge right there where we did the fold? That's gonna be the back. So I'm gonna take the back one and fold it in first and use this tab that's on, here's the front. I want it to fold away. So that'll make everything kind of nice and rounded. I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to that. I don't wanna see those rough edges on my projects. All right, don't forget to put this guy in. Now, I went ahead and sealed these. I went ahead and put adhesive on it, and they're gonna have to undo it. If you don't like that, you can leave this one open, and instead of putting a bow here, you could take a ribbon and tie it all the way around to hold it closed. But I decided, since I don't have very much of that ribbon yet, that we're just gonna do a bow. And they can just pop that open, it'll be easy to open. And there you have it, easy, easy, easy. Now this DSP is the Granny Apples, almost said it, Granny Apple Green DSP from the Brights DSP stack. Have you guys seen those? They're six by six and they have all the color families. So you would get four sheets of every color in each family. It's fabulous, I love it. Um, this measures one and five eighths by five and a fourth and I'm just gonna put it there on the front. All right, so now let's make our tag. We are going to first stamp, let me get these over here, stamp our sentiment and then we will cut it. I'm seeing, Kathy, I'm seeing you say that you just bought some little Debbie snacks. Yeah, they make good, very inexpensive treats. You know, candy can get very expensive. You know, especially if you want to buy the good stuff, you know, Hershey's, Reese's, that can get very expensive. But little Debbie snacks are very affordable. Okay, so let me get this all nice and neat back here so we can see what we're using. Be really careful when you take those off because I could see if you're being rough that that could snap. So just be really gentle with these framelits. I think it would still work even if it did snap off, you would just have to align it on your magnetic platform. But don't let that happen, just be gentle. All right, we're gonna use this guy right here. I have a feeling I'm gonna use this framelit quite a bit. I like the shape of it. It's a real treat being friends with you. That's a great sentiment for somebody who loves to send out treats. I like it. All right, now let's layer these up. I have cut a whisper white stitch square. This is the, not the largest, the one down from there, so the second largest. And these are the little hearts from our treat time stamp. And I'm just gonna do some hearts on here. They're gonna, you're not gonna see them too much, so we don't need to worry too much about those. Dimensionals. One in the middle, and this is a blueberry bushel scallop circle, just a little bit smaller than the square. I use my layering circle framelits for that, and then we're gonna put that right there. Now, you could put it in the middle, but I really kinda liked it off center. Like a dye from Chalk Talk. I don't know what that means, Judy. Like a dye from Chalk Talk. Um, I, I remember those dies. Oh, this one, is that similar to that? I don't remember, I just remember the big one. Okay, ribbon. Here is some new ribbon I showed you yesterday in my unboxing video, Granny Apple Green, and this is called Textured Weave Ribbon. And it's, oh, I don't know, is it an inch? It says with half an inch. It looks wider than half an inch. It looks more like um, three-fourths, but whatever. And it's very flat, so it's not very bulky when you make your bows. And you can pull these. See how I did that? I made that tight and then I pulled these. If you hold that in the center, you can pull the legs to make the loops smaller. And I don't have my good scissors. Let me grab them. Okay, this ribbon only comes in two colors. I wish it came in more. I think it's the green and the gray, gray granite. Maybe we'll have more in the, the next few catalogs. They do that sometimes. All right, I'm gonna put it to the side. 
And there we have it. I don't like the name of these devil creams, but they do look yummy. I've got three of them now, three devil creams ready to go. What do you guys think? Easy, easy, easy. You could make this, you could change this color to red and make it red, white, and blue, and that could be your 4th of July project. I'm starting to think about 4th of July projects. I was looking today at Walmart to see what I could find. Nothing yet. Cute. I love it, and it's easy. All right, so good. I'm glad you guys like it. Let me clean this, and then I'm gonna see if I missed anything that you guys are asking me. You're watching me in Home Depot, Kathleen. That's so funny. With others watching, well, hello, everybody in Home Depot. <laughs> that's funny okay one more project you guys ready for this one um i played around and i honestly did not have a ton of time to design for these because it's been a crazy week but and i didn't get these i didn't really get them until really yesterday to play with them um but i did have this one and i played with it i think it was on monday so anyways i was trying to decide how I could use the, the actual framelit, the treat time framelit to make something else. And I'm still got something up my sleeve I'm trying to, to work out. But this, if you can see the back, makes that cute little envelope, like the report card envelopes, and it's tiny. And guess what? Wait, where's the other one? Let me get the other one. Guess what it's the perfect size for? A gift card. Yay, a new gift card holder. You guys know I love gift card holders. So that's what we're gonna do with this last one. Um, we are going to, let me think how I wanna do this. I am also adding in another stamp set, the, the handwritten background stamp. You can see on here how it makes, um, it look like patterned paper almost. So I'm using my Stamparatus. I think we'll just stamp the paper before we cut. I've done it both ways, and I don't know which way is better. I think they're both fine. Now, Stamparatus, how many of you have ordered the Stamparatus? I saw my orders come through when the catalog went live on Friday, and many of you ordered the Stamparatus. Um, if you're not familiar, it's our stamp positioning tool, and it has two plates. That way you can do um, two-step or three-step stamping. But today, for background stamp, we only need one, so we're gonna take that off. And it's red rubber, so we don't need the foam. We don't need anything else for it. Um, I don't even really need this. So let's get it set up. Blueberry bushel, and I'm gonna put this on here. Let me talk you through what I was thinking earlier because I did make a mistake the first time that I did this. We're gonna use this, and we're gonna use the rounded one. And um, because this background stamp has to be up in, it has to be the right way. You can't just stamp it randomly because it's words. You don't want the words to be upside down. And so when I first stamped it, I thought I would cut it like this, but then I forgot that this part isn't going to the top. This part is going to be the bottom of the back. So that's how we're going to cut it. So we need our words to be... The top needs to be like this. All right, so I have to look at it. Make sure, well, I just keep pulling that apart. Oh, and sticking to the magnet. That's all right, we'll need that in a minute. So writing this way. So I'm gonna set it here, right in the middle. Let's put our, pull our paper down a little bit like that in the middle and put the magnet there. Okay, now here's a little tip. You can put your stamp case underneath your plastic. Um, I am for a loss of words today. You're, you know, this thing, <laughs> the, the plate, the hinge, the plate. Um, that way it makes it flat. So when you ink it, it'll be flat and it's not kind of wonky. All right, so, ah, oh, Deb, that's very sweet. Thank you. All right, we're gonna ink this all at blueberry bushel and like this. Now, I really like to use my Stamparatus for my background stamps. If you saw um, our Stamparatus blog hop, you saw me do that because sometimes when you're stamping with these giant blocks, it's very hard to get equal coverage 
there's always a spot that like didn't you didn't put enough pressure on and, and with the stamp rattus when that happens you can just go back and push down on that spot and it'll fill in so that's why i really like to use a stamp rattus with my background stamps and i can take my super juicy right now my super juicy just freshly washed or rinsed or whatever you want to call it chamois and clean that off I'm gonna move all that around. I do like the chamois for that a lot. It's a really easy way to clean those background stamps. Okay, now let's see how this lines up. Here's our paper, and I used a half a sheet of paper just to kind of give me some wiggle room with my background stamp. I always like to stamp on a larger piece than what I actually need, and then I cut it down. All right, so we're gonna snap this in. And this rounded one, mine, doesn't stay in quite as well as the other one. There we go. And we have to put it to the bottom. I keep forgetting it goes to the bottom on this project. Let's center it. Most of this right here will be the overlapping, so we don't really need to worry about it. Got a, a rogue dimensional paper. There we go. Let's take a look at it. Perfect. Uh-oh. Dropped it on the floor. There we go. Perfect. All right. It's very quiet here today, you guys. No dogs barking. No UPS man yet. And my kids are here. It's very quiet. Seems kind of spooky. Okay. I even have the rabbit in here with me. He's very sleepy, though. Now, we need to put a score line on either side of this circle. So, I'm gonna take it and make sure it's flush over here. And I'm just going to drag my stylus, whatever the closest score line is. No exact measurements, just on, the, on either side. Um, you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a score line right here. I didn't do that earlier, but it will help. Well, if I can get my stylus in there. There we go. It will help fold that over. Storming in Tampa so it's loud. You know, Pam, I'm really jealous. It's been a while since we've had any rain and you get to a point where you just crave a good storm. So I'm very jealous. All right, I'm gonna put some adhesive right here and oops, look, I did way too much. Don't do that. Put it on the side that you're flipping over and use tear and tape because it's much thinner. All right, so there we go, that's it. That's your envelope, how cute, right? And I was thinking this could even like hold like a Hershey bar, hmm. you know, the little ones. That will be coming later probably. All right, let's make our tag. And this piece actually goes inside, okay? So that's to put your gift card on. I just used a glue dot to put my gift card on. And we're gonna punch a circle from Blueberry Bushel DSP from the in color paper stack with that that was a one and a half inch that was a, the same one I used a little while ago fold it in half put some adhesive on there and center it there we go that way it looks like you know it's a little pool to pull it out so cute all right, so let's do some stamping. I'm gonna use that grid paper I had over here, this little tiny piece of grid paper. We're gonna use the sentiment, and the sentiments are, again, from a big thank you, not from treat time, from a big thank you. And let's see, we need, where's my granny apple? Here we go. Let's do, no, let's do the sentiment first. The sentiment's in blueberry bushel. Right there, uh-oh, wait, mm, too juicy. My blueberry bushel pad is super juicy, so I, I forget not to stamp very hard. Let's try that again. That's why cardstock has two sides, so that you can do one side as practice. There we go, that's better. All right, now I've got the two flowers, this one and this one. I'm gonna do this one in full strength. When I stamp this one, I'm gonna stamp off first. That way it's a lighter color. All right, so let's put that there and these down here. Then 
the solid one, stamp off. And let's see if I can line that up without sticking my head in the camera. Oh well, we're going for it. There we go. See how when you stamp off it, it almost looks like Lemon Lime Twist. Very similar, these two colors. There we go. Cute. So cute. All right, now we've got these. We've got these. We've got to die cut. One more thing. Let me close all the ink up. These two, I pointed them out. These two little scallop framelits in the Treat Time Bundle. They're my favorite. They're so cute. I really have a feeling I'm going to be using these quite a bit. I can't resist a scallop edge. All right, just whisper white. Let's find a place for it to go where the magnets won't turn it. There we go. Thanks, Robin. I love these colors too. I love them in the spring, like March and April. I really love Kelly Green and navy. Where's my other plate? Oh, I just put it over there. All right. Now, I didn't get my dye brush. Sometimes I'm going to show you guys what I do. And I know that some of you do this. If you take your framelit and go like that, sometimes it'll just pop out, but this one's not going to do it. How many of you do that? Do you do that? Especially with a little doodad. Sometimes they'll just all pop right out. <laughs> it's just a little trick. I don't think it's an official stamping up technique, but it's what I do. Okay. Ooh, my hands are dirty. Let's get some glue dots on this guy. We're almost done. Put it down here. And then the DSP. This is the Granny Apple Green DSP. Again, from the DSP, um, Bright's DSP stack. It's the same size as this. And if you look on the PDF, it'll tell you what size they are. And done. Ta-da! Love it. All right, so there you have it. Slides in and out very easily. All right, what do you guys think? Do you love the Treat Time Bundle as much as I do? I hope that I've done it justice, and I hope that I've made you realize that if it's not already, already on your wish list, that it should be, and I think it should be pretty high. Pretty high on that wish list. So let's look at everything that we did today. Um, the sour cream container the gift card holder, and the box, all with that treat time framelit and stamp set. Really fun and cute. Um, and the colors, they're brights, guys. Brights, pineapple punch and blueberry bushel are in colors, but then Granny Apple is in the brights family. And I thought I might show you guys this too. Um, six by six paper, our packs come in these, these packs come in six by six, so here's how it comes, like this, okay? And a few years ago when we started carrying six by six packs, I got this crate, and it's like a cute little wood crate. I don't even know where I got it, Hobby Lobby or Michael's. And I made these little dividers from chipboard, and I just put on here, you know, okay, here's all the brights, here's all the regals, here are the neutrals, subtles, in colors, I put the two groups of in colors together. Tropical chic, here's our wood textures, and um, look, I've already forgotten. Artistic expressions, you know, I used it like two weeks in a row, now I can't remember the name. And the vellum. So I have it all like that, kind of like a file, and that way I can just pull it out and put it back in, and doesn't get lost. Now, I tend to get a lot of these, when we had the 12 by 12s, I actually had a big crate, and that's how I organized those. Um, so I may need to make these guys have their own crate and divide them up by color. You know, I don't know, maybe. It'll take more space. Anyway, just a tip I thought I would share with you guys. Um, I really, you'll see me using these a ton this year. Um, these are some of my favorite things because they really just match your ink and your cardstock and it makes, you know, takes all the the hard thinking out. You don't have to think about, oh, where am I going to find paper to match? Okay, so there we have it. Don't forget, go and save or print your PDF. Put your orders in by Monday if you want these. If your list just got really big, you need to take advantage of that starter kit. 
don't worry. There's no pressure to be some giant online seller. I had, I've had that question quite a bit lately. If you wanna get that starter kit and you wanna be what we call a hobby demo where you just enjoy the discount, that's totally okay. You don't have to try and work this as a full-time business, just to let you know. But if you want to, you can. That's the beauty of it. It's independent demonstratorship. You can do whatever you want with it. And I think that you guys have seen how much it's blessed my life being able to quit my full-time job. So it can be that for you if you want it to. Um, uh, Karen, I'm the third person to say that card talk has two sides. Yeah, that's a joke that we all tell. And uh, because it's true, we all screw up. We all just flip it right back over. Um, I'm going to scroll through here and just make sure I didn't miss anything that you guys were asking me. Um, next week, I do plan on doing Facebook Friday again at the same time. Um, my kids, hopefully, will be okay with that. Um, now, the following week, I'm going to be traveling, so I don't think we'll have it that week. But this next Friday, for sure. All right. I think... I've covered it all. If I have it, I'll go back through and I'll answer your questions. Thanks so much, you guys, for joining me today. Let me know if you have questions um, about anything that I did today and make sure that you print off your PDF and you enter for the prize over at pinkpuckroo.com. Have a wonderful weekend, you guys. Happy summer. Hope you get some rest and relaxation in. Have a great one. Thanks.